When you started in, in this program and you saw it unfold and you saw the tremendous impact, uh, did you ever imagine when you began that program that you would see in your lifetime this impact? Uh, I, I first place, I certainly didn't expect it so fast. We were very lucky in getting that single recessive gene for sharpness. If we hadn't had that to get those semi-dwarf varieties, uh, we would have been much longer with this, with this program. And, uh, when did you bring those genes in, 59? When, when did we... Into the breeding program. Well, it was right from the very beginning. 58. We, 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 in our first collection that we made of varieties, we brought those in. So the, the crosses were made in 1962. The crosses with the Sharp and the Tall variety were made in 1962, a whole bunch of them. You see, we, we flubbed around for, from 45 till till 57 before we ever found the dwarf Japanese. Yes, I know. Genes. You had a, we, it took we you struggled longer. and found mm. nothing until we got the Japanese dwarfing yes, gene. You had that nor, that nor in 10 for Japan and wheat, and we had the DJ Wu Jim, but we got the DJ Wu in the very first first crosses we made. Yes. We made 29 crosses at, right at the beginning, and then uh, DJ Wu Jin and, uh, and Ijotsi were in several of those. We also used Taichung Naked One and variety, which had also had DJ Genesis shopping gene. And, and uh, so we, we were lucky that way. That's, but uh, it's true that we didn't envision, we didn't know how fast it would be. But after I'd uh, been there three years, I told the people back in New York when George Rao would bring us back to give our reports, you know, you were there too. And I said, I'll eat my shirt if the Philippines is not self sufficient and right within three years from now. And they were. <laughs> No, it's amazing. Now they've, they've gone back some because the population is uh, yeah. But uh, how about this? Uh, I think that the general public doesn't understand very well the complexities of changes in problems. Let's say the changes in the uh, insects yeah. and the viruses that mm -hmm. the vector spreads. Yes. Yes, how yes. about this? How many? Yeah. Of these kinds of problems, did you have to confront well, along the way? Well, there's a whole series of them. The rice tumbro virus, for example, we found they had very forms of that, uh, and then the uh, bacterial blight disease. Uh, we found that the bacteria were changing as we got varieties that were, were <coughs> resistant. Well, then all of a sudden they wouldn't be resistant anymore. That's because of the organism had changed, not the, not the variety. Uh, and so we had a, it's a continuous process, same as you have with rust and wheat. So sure. You had to keep going all the time. Still still one going. other thing that I think, uh, both in your rice program and our wheat program, international wheat program, this international testing mm -hmm. so that you could get the reaction of the diseases or of the whole collection of breeding materials and varieties uh, everywhere in the areas where rice was grown or wheat was grown was like developing, printing a new book mm -hmm. for the young scientists that were going to use that yes, information. We had the International Rice Testing Program around the world in all the countries that had rice was an important crop. We had this nursery that we put out and we had their own varieties in with stuff that we introduced and uh, just compare them, see whether we could improve what they already had or we found time we found some of that germ pattern was very good for us back home, sure. say, so depending on where you were. We brought some stuff from Africa. It's not a major rice producing area, but it's, it's important because they import rice and spend a lot of foreign exchange bring the rice in. And there were certain areas where rice was domesticated in West Africa, not a big area like East Africa, yeah. or like East Asia, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, different kinds of rice. Yes, I don't right. know if that contributed any useful genes to what you were using or not. So well, we, we, we did the, there's, a, there's another, uh, the Oryza sativa is the common, yes, common, right, but there are about 22 different different species, the genus Oryza. And there's one over in Africa that they did commercialize. Yes. I, I always Jack. remember when we had a Japanese scientist who was on special assignment with us. We, we asked him how he liked this, this, uh, this other rice. He said, oh, I, I tasted, I felt delicious. <laughs> <laughs>